So this is our Programming 260 presentation uh, to cover all of the material that we've learned thus far. First, we're going to cover the functional development process. What we had to do first in our program was define the problem. And our problem was, how are we going to get the tavern owner to say what we wanted him to say? We had a, solu a solution where he would give us random responses of wise statements and then stupid statements, which we call our foolish statements. So we built our test matrix. And if we can look at it right there, it's all right there. We outlined our solution by creating a formula or algorithm. And it is the random number equals random number or in integer, whatever integer goes in times 10 plus the response type. And that will give us a, either a wise response or foolish response or two possible invalid tests. We next uh, went ahead and made up a, a test matrix uh, to test the algorithm. So after we defined the problem and solved, uh, solved it, we actually wrote code um, over here to show that we run the matrix. Let's find this, go to over. So in the tavern control, um, this is the code. We translated the algorithm into code. So that's the next step of the functional development process. Uh, so what we have here is the first, uh, we have 20 strings and the first 10 are wise responses. And the second 10, the last half are foolish responses. So we have uh, a few uh, tests here that will give us uh, a response of negative one or negative two, depending if it's a invalid test. Um, but here, are the this is the way we found out whether or not to, it's a wise a useful response or a foolish response um, if the level of hero is between these um, parts these variables uh, the response type is then adjusted accordingly so this here is the the equation that we can use to find out what the owner response will be uh, once we, so we'll go ahead and test this and it's failed, showing that it's failed. And what we'll take a look at this and so it says, uh, the owner response are the dishes in the bath. I hate you. Go clean them. Pay off your tab. And if we go look up here, that is, uh, one of the, um, Valid responses. Valid responses. And the failing uh, is one of the invalid responses. So even though it's failing, it's actually succeeding in passing the test that we set up. Correct. So next, we had to create a unit test in our control layer. So I chose to create the function of melee damage. So when the player attacks something, they're going to do damage. So I had to create a test matrix, and that's what we have right here. Now, if I explain this, so it all makes perfect sense to you, if our attack is 35, our strength is 23, and our opponent defense is 17, how are we getting this variable? Well, it's very easy. We had to create an equation for it. And it's melee damage equals attack plus strength minus the defense of the opponent. So when we add these up perfectly, so we're adding these two and then subtracting this one, it gives us 41. Now we had to figure out when our attack would be valid. So if our attack is negative 14, obviously we're not doing anything. So we wrote into our code uh, some of the rules and boundaries. So the attack must be between five and 100, the strength must be between two and 100, and the defense of the opponent must be between 5 and 100. So if it's below 5, then it's going to be invalid for the attack. So if we ran it over here, we have an invalid attack, but everything else is valid. So if this is the case, it'll output negative 1. 
over here we have a strength value that isn't proper so this won't work but these two are correct but this will output a negative two because the strength is improper if we go to the next case everything is proper except for the opponent defense which is negative 15 and as we stated over here it has to be between 5 and 100 and this clearly is not but the first two are in the correct variable range so this will output a negative 3 now the last case we made will never happen but if it did happen it would have to output this correctly and this is if all the variables are way over their limits so we have negative four for that because these are just preposterous numbers that will never happen in the game we had a tr I then translated this into the pseudocode written right here and you can see it says if actor attack is less than five or greater than a hundred return negative one so that's our first boundary rule if strength is less than two or greater than a hundred return negative two if our opponent defense is less than five or greater than a hundred return negative three the computer will add the attack of the strength the computer then will subtract the opponent defense the last step will be return the melee damage. So we can see this perfectly over here in the actor control. This is the melee function. So first we input some values of attack, strength, and the opponent defense. So if our attack is less than five or attack is greater than a hundred, we will return four else will return negative one so these are nested statements in their prime and you can see that this is the exact same thing as over here this is the equation which is right here and then after this is done operating it'll return the melee damage now we can see this in proper uh, testing environments as we run the code which we are going to do now. So we're going to run actor control test. So here we said if our variables that we put in were 35 and 23 and 17 it would output 41. This is our expected result. And we can go through the list and we can compare directly with these tests, which are the exact same, and they all output correctly. So melee test number two, negative one, melee test number two, I mean number three is negative three, as seen over here, and negative four, as seen right here. So this code works perfectly just to the way we wrote it. And I was very happy to get this working. So I was assigned to do a unit test for calculating the spell damage done to an opponent. So this was the problem area. Uh, so I needed to create a function that would calculate this. And uh, so I came up with the equation of attack plus mana minus the defense of the opponent. Plus, we wanted to add a little bit of randomness to our spells, so I added a random number times 10 is uh, added to this first half of the equation. Uh, I came up with some validation rules that attack must be between 5 and 100, uh, mana must be between 5 and 103, and the defense of an opponent must be between 5 and 100. Uh, and as far as these validations are met then our test should be valid so I made a test matrix here with a valid test um, and with invalid tests uh, so because we are working with random numbers um, our output will have a range of numbers that are possible so as long as our results are within that range uh, we are good to go 
uh, invalid tests, I had several because of uh, different things. So if the attack is negative, if the man is negative, if the defense is negative, or if uh, each one of these things are above, um, I will get a different result. Um, and of course the boundaries, so the lowest and the highest possible uh, test for all of these. Uh, and the return value will be used to determine the, the spell damage uh, done to uh, other entities in our game. So uh, I wrote out pseudocode for this. So if attack actor attack is less than five or greater than 100, then return negative one. Uh, if the actor mana is less than five or greater than 103, return negative two. And if the defense of the enemy is less than five or greater than 100, return negative three. So that way, if we know, if we get a negative one, two, or three, we can identify what um, variable is not performing correctly. Uh, so the first thing that happens is computer adds attack value uh, to mana value, then subtracts the defense of the enemy. Uh, the second part of the, the code will be the computer then multiplies a random generated number by 10, uh, and uh, the computer adds the first equation with the second equation, part of the first part of the equation to the second. Uh, so over here in my code uh, starts here, spell damage, I pass it uh, attack, mana, and opponent's defense, uh, and these are um, values I will get from from a different class. Uh, so here, if attack is less than or or greater than uh, 100, then return negative four. Um, else, return negative one. So that will tell me um, whether or not it's and or all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and then here's it checks the mana, and here it checks the uh, opponent defense. Uh, and down here is the equation that I'm using. So I created a variable called mana damage that equals uh, attack plus mana minus opponent defense. That's the first part of the equation. And then the second part is this uh, random number times 10 uh, is added to the first part and it returns mana damage. So we'll go ahead and uh, jump over to my test. So I have several different tests. Um, that I made up. So this first one is uh, we're testing the uh, valid test. So this one should be valid. And the second one is invalid because our attack is over uh, the specified value. Um, the third test is uh, the mana is over. And the fourth test, uh, opponent's defense is over. And the fifth test is a test of our, one of our boundaries. And so we'll go ahead and run this. Run actor control test. So our spell test one returned 38. So 38 lies between 31 and 40, so that was successful. Uh, test two, three, four, and five all failed because they did. And uh, test five is the boundary test, and that was successful as well. Now we're going to explain the selection statements in Java. So we have an if statement and an if else statement. First, we're going to talk about the if statement. If we go up here, we can see an if statement. If our user response is equal to zero, the player wants to quit. So we know we want to use an if statement if there's only one action that we wanted to do. So right here, the player wanted to quit, so we only gave them the option of quitting. Now an if else statement, we don't have any written in this code, but in theory, it would work like this. We have one condition with two alternative, alternative answers. So if the user response is less than or equal to 10, it would print this mess well it would use this message right here but else that won't work try again so it is an if else statement if there is one condition and two alternatives i now will explain the if else if statements and a switch statement 
The if-else-if if statement is used when there are two or more possible actions to choose from, and each action is based on a different condition. So this is very useful in uh, certain situations. Uh, the, K, the switch statement, though, is used when you want to check to see if the value of an expression is equal to one of the items in a list of valid values. Okay, so let's start with this if-else-if if statement. So in the code here, I have um, created a new character view class. And then in this class, you're asked questions uh, and it will affect the character based off of the user responses. So you're creating a character for the game. Down here, we have the if else if statements. So the first one is if the user pushed M, then do this. If the if, and then this, the, the next uh, action uh, is if answer equals W. So this is a different, uh, different action, different possibility than it's uh, equal to this. Okay, and then you do have the else uh, at the end of the ladder um, stating that it was an invalid response. So I have several of these that exp that uh, will affect the character's uh, stats. So here's affecting their mana. This one's affecting strength. Um, same as, as here, strength and mana, depending on uh, what the user puts. Okay, so in the I've created another one, blacksmith view, and uh, this one will demonstrate uh, switch statements. So a switch statement, of course, um, <clears throat> here we are trying to decide which uh, method, which function to run. Uh, based off of the user's input to this menu that's been displayed to them. So uh, if the user ha is, so in case B, if if the choice, which is being passed into it, it is equal to B, then run this function. Um, but if the choice is equal to S, so it's making a comparison, then run this one and uh, if nothing is equal to the choice that's being passed into it, uh, then it displays this invalid selection. Um, <clears throat> and these are the functions below that are being run depending on what menu option has been chosen. We are now going to discuss scope and lifespan of variables. What is the scope of a variable? Well, the scope of a variable is in the location that it can be used. What is the lifespan? It's when it is created and born. Over here in our code, we can see these things. So first, we see these two curly brackets right here. This get player's name function has a scope that goes from here to here. The things that are in its scope are all of these. Now, a variable that's defined here and born is scanner keyboard. So this variable is born right here and it dies right here at the end of its scope or lifespan. I will now go over arguments. There are two different ways of doing this. You can pass by value and pass by reference. And we're dealing with two different things here. There are primitive values, which are integers and uh, numbers, strings, that kind of thing. And we are also dealing with uh, instances of objects that we've created, okay? So when you're dealing with primitive values, you pass by value. Uh, when you're dealing with uh, objects and, and things, you pass by reference because you don't want to manipulate the original uh, of that. You want to manipulate the, uh, the instance of it. So let's go jump over the code here really quick and I'll show you what I mean. So let's find here, we got, so this, add stats one, add stats two, add stats three, we are creating a variable and we are passing these strings into it. So down here, when we call that, so add stats one, add stats two, this is passing by value. So we're passing the literal value into this and 
make and assigning it to prompt message. Uh, pass by reference though it deals with objects. So here we are creating a hero. Okay, and hero is a now object. So we're making an instance of of the hero object. Uh, we have these values passed into it. Um, so we have multiple values assigned to this instance. Um, and then so down here, uh, after we run through these different uh, functions, we pass uh, hero as the object. Uh, so we're passing by reference here because we don't want to pass each individual um, value uh, we can pass the whole thing as a whole, and that's by reference.